Let us now start with the first strategy in the elimination of wrong choices. So first is familiarity principle. How do we apply this particular principle? In the application of this principle or this technique, you should ask two important questions. The first question is, what subject or topic? So in the criminology board, there are six major areas. So we have criminal law and jurisprudence, we have law enforcement administration, criminalistics, uh, crime detection and investigation, criminal sociology, and correctional administration. Ayan. In a particular subject that you are taking, that is subdivided into several sub-subjects. So, for example, if you have criminalistics, in criminalistics, there are a lot of subjects. Now, in the particular question that you are dealing, you should ask the question, what subject is being asked in this particular question? And if you are able to tell what subject, you may go further by asking the question, what topic of the subject? So after you are able to answer this question, the next question to ask is, are the choices found in the subject or topic? Now, eliminate the choice not being used in the subject or topic. So that is how you should apply familiarity principle. Now, tignan natin ang example in order to, for us to understand more thoroughly this particular technique or strategy. So this is the question. Who was the one who once said, let no one despise the ridges on account of their smallness, for they are, in some respect, the most important of all anthropological data. The question is very simple since uh, it is an objective question, but just the same, if you are not able to apply or you are not careful enough in eliminating the choices, you will get wrong with, or you may answer or choose the wrong answer. So the key word here, of course, that will guide us in the application of the familiarity principle is the word ridges. So when we talk of ridges, what subject are we talking? Of course, that is under criminalistics. But what particular subject in criminalistics? The answer, of course, is fingerprint. Okay? It is about fingerprint. Now, you apply the second question. Are the choices found in the subject? And in the third uh, step, eliminate the choices not found in the subject. For example, we have Francis Galton. Do we encounter the name Francis Galton in fingerprint? The answer is yes. Therefore, candidate answer. Letter B, John Howard. Do we encounter the name of John Howard in fingerprint? The answer is, of course, no. Because si John Howard ay makita natin sa correctional administration. In more particularity, na belongs siya sa tinatawag natin na uh, uh, yung tinatawag na prison reformers. And then, what about letter C? Cesar Lombroso. Do we encounter the term Cesar or the name Cesar Lombroso in fingerprint? The answer is, of course, no. Sa natin may encounter si Lombroso? Of course, sa Crimson. 
And then, uh, of course, meron ding na-encounter natin sa polygraph na pangalan ni Lumbroso. In fact, uh, there is a board question na patungkol kay Lumbroso, especially his contribution in polygraph examination. The last item, Ridge Cook. Here, we have Ridge. Do you think this is the answer? Or do we have Ridge Cook name in fingerprint identification? The answer is definitely no. The answer here is letter A. Francis Galton.